What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, I appreciate you stopping by. Today, we're talking about this monstrosity of a rig, the DJI Ronin S loaded with all the accessories. How I kind of want to break this video down is first, all the accessories that I use for this setup. Two, really tell you how I built it, how it's all kind of formed together. Three, I want to go through the settings that I use, the DJI Ronin app. Lastly, number four, we're going to talk about the pros and cons to this setup. Let's get right into it right after this intro. All right guys, so pretty much anything that I would put on this thing is on here already as it sits. You'll see I have the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus on the side here. This is not always on here and actually I prefer it to not be on here, but I wanted to show you exactly all the accessories that you could get away with on this rig. If you're trying to capture some great audio while you're getting a gimbal shot for some reason, I've had moments where I've needed that and this came in handy. So I did throw it on just for the sake of, yes, this could be an option for you. One last thing you could throw on this thing just to make it just absolutely ridiculous. If you wanted some light, you're shooting at night and you wanna throw on a light, I'd have to figure out how to rotate it though. I've never done it before because I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I've never needed the opportunity to put a light on. Just a few seconds I can get my camera accessible to where I, I wanna go. To start, what I had to do was kind of build the two small rig handles on the side and those are attached to the small rig clamp that you can find on small rigs website. I'll link all this down in the description, easy. Super simple. So with this rig, I have my Focus 7 small HD monitor right in front of my face when I'm filming. Okay, it's centered on the rig. That way I know exactly where I'm shooting. There's a bunch of accessories out there that attach to the bottom, stick out, and then you have a handle over here. You got your monitor down here. And to me, it was like, I'm looking down here, but my camera's up here. It was just kind of a mess. And I always found myself kind of off with symmetry, whereas this setup is very much right in line and allows me to be here as opposed to here. I'm squeezing my guests like, uh, I can do that. All right, so it just makes it so much easier. Going back, I kind of jumped ahead. This is where it gets tricky. Connecting the small HD focus monitor that's located down here all the way up to this port way up here and be able to have still full range of motion up, down, side to side without cords getting caught. That's a lot, follow along, okay? Point A, which is the port underneath and then run it down this arm Back behind here, something you just have to play with if you decide to set it up this way. Cord management took me some time, to say the least. This is where it got interesting, all right? So we'll take the monitor off so you can see. But what I have here is a couple of these extenders. I knew the monitor was gonna be right here, so I got a real flat HDMI cable. I didn't want another long cord and it works really well because when I want to tilt the monitor up and down It stays with it. All of this just being able to set up onto the rig. That was a pain in the butt. It works great. Love it Sometimes I have trouble getting the HDMI into the monitor. What I really like about this with the accessories and the handles right here, as opposed to being way out here, is I still have capability of using the focus wheel on the Ronin. We're gonna move into the next part on the settings that I use. I'm gonna bust out the app. Three, two, one. DJ Ronin S. For the most part, we're gonna stick with motor parameters and user profiles. All right, let's jump into motor parameters. So with motor parameters, I usually just do auto-tune. We'll get into this. I'm gonna click auto-tune so you can see exactly what it does. It makes some funky noises, but. So here it goes. All right, that's it. So pretty quick. 
Okay, so the only real time I will mess with the motor parameters is really just controlling the stiffness and the strength. If I have a zoom lens on here and I know I wanna zoom out a little bit more and it's gonna throw off the balance on the tilt, then I'll increase the stiffness and strength of that tilt motor. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about with motor parameters. So let's get into the user profiles. We'll start in mode one. There's several ways to set these up. Again, do what's best for you, but I am gonna show you exactly how I set these up. I love the different settings I have. One is more of like a sport mode. Two is like super slow cinematic. And then mode three is specifically for the barrel roll effect. So mode one, speed is high. So essentially if I'm moving this up, it's gonna adjust quickly with me. Now if I go, we'll switch this to low. And now if I go up, it goes a lot slower. See how much slower that is? And, and then control. Control is really where you're getting the settings for the joystick. All right, so let's jump into the control for mode one. Channels, I don't ever mess with. Motion, so dead band is medium, max speed is high, and smoothness is high. But for this one, I want it to be a little bit quicker. So see, I can really just get this thing going. That's at max speed. And then you have the control to change the endpoints. If I want to click on here and I go down to, let's just say 43. If I go left, now it's gonna stop there. That's as far as I can go. Whereas if I'm all the way up here, it goes all the way around. So you're getting that 180 degrees. You can control the degrees that you're going left and right, which is a great feature. It's great. Okay, tilt. Let's get into tilt. High, medium, low. So high dead band, max speed, medium, smoothness, low. Mode two. So here is where I set up my custom settings. And I wanted to just kind of show you high, medium, low, those settings, but I wanted to show you the difference in doing a customized setup. So I went ahead, went in here. Mode two is usually what I'm shooting on to get really that smooth, cinematic footage on the gimbal. That's what I'm really going after. For the pan, it's gonna be 15. For the tilt, up, down, it's gonna be 15. For the roll, it's gonna be 20. Dead band, we got pan 10, tilt 10, roll zero. Sensitivity, pan 20, tilt 25, and the roll 20. Let's jump into the control. So we go over to motion, again, customize settings. So if you go into pan, we got dead band, you can customize it right there. I got dead band at 30, max speed at 32, smoothness at 15. Tilt, same thing, customize settings. So dead band, 28, max speed, 26 smoothness 20 roll low 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 mode three this is mostly for barrel roll i do have a quick solution to make sure my cords aren't getting tangled because they will i made it to where i could unplug this hdmi cable and now from here what i will do is gotta bring it back around this rubber band right here that's holding these cords on. This rubber band is a little bit more slack so I can tuck this end right here. And again, this is just a one-off shot that I wanna get to get that barrel roll effect and then I'll plug it back in. And now I have the functionality of the barrel roll. Getting back into the speed. So we have high, high, high. I tend to mess around with this depending on the shot I'm getting. If I really need to get in, I will kind of change the sensitivity to medium. That's usually where I change it. Otherwise, I'm just trying to be a little bit smoother with my joystick controls. So the motion, the joystick controls for this setting. Underneath the pan, I have medium, medium, low. Tilt, medium, medium, high. And then under the roll, I have dead band low, max speed high and smoothness high. But lastly, I wanna get into the pros and cons for me of this setup. A lot of pros, I only have one con, the weight. But what I'm gonna tell you is the weight can actually help you with capturing smoother cinematic shots. The weight of this gimbal actually helps with the smoothness of the shot. Just physics or something, you know, it is heavy, all right? it's beast mode all right you you carry this thing all day getting a workout so the biggest pro i would have to say the ability to have this screen right here right in front of your face 
the functionality of having it being able to tilt as you move into different camera angles. If you go into under sling mode, now your screen is way down here. It's hard to see with this bar right here. And all I have to do now is I got the screen right, still right in front of my face. All right guys, so sorry that was so long winded, a little bit longer of a video this time, but I really wanted to give you the exact way I set this up. If you enjoyed this video and you found it beneficial, please just hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Helps the channel, it helps us build as a community and beef up that Ronin S. Go have some fun, shoot some cinematic footage, and we will see you in the next one. I don't know why, but as soon as I finish the video, I just want to dance. Is that weird? <sighs> Did you watch that? Are you watching me? Just watch me. <laughs> Dang it. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I wanted some food so bad. That's what I deal with. Daily, get a new office. <laughs> Working on it again. All right.